It's so good to be back here in South Carolina. Home of the Gamecocks. Nice feed. Wow. Another fantastic flush by Bryant. Ducked it right on his head. Look at the ball movement for Carolina. Gosh, that's pretty. Hi everybody, welcome into another season of Gamecock Insider, the weekly look at what's making news inside the University of South Carolina Athletics Department. My name is Derek Scott and I'm so pleased to be back with you once again in this most unique of seasons for college athletes, coaches, and yes, you the fans. So as we get the show started, we'd like to begin by giving thanks for having this opportunity to visit with you once again, while also acknowledging the added importance that has been taken on for our team to deliver Gamecock content into your homes during this most unique of years. Shane Beamer, well, you gotta imagine he'll be the focus of our show today. In fact, Todd Ellis had a chance to visit with him exclusively following his introduction to the media on a video conference earlier this week. We'll bring you that interview a little later on in the program. We'll also be talking Gamecock women's basketball, taking a look back at Carolina's win over a nationally ranked Iowa State team, and also previewing the upcoming matchup with the Temple Owls with the voice of women's basketball, Brad Muller. Gamecock men's basketball team has been forced to pause its season due to COVID-19 tests that uh, forced the cancellation of games with both Wofford and George Washington. The team remains in the testing protocol with the hopes of getting the season resumed in the very near future. On the Prisma Health Injury Update, speaking of Gamecock men's basketball, Nathan Nelson has a broken hand. He's been unable to play for Frank Martin's team to this point this season. And Seventh Woods suffered a sprained knee during the opening weekend of competition. Didn't miss any game time, did miss some practice time, but his recovery is well underway and he should be ready to go when the season resumes. Well, when we come back with more of Gamecock Insider, as promised, We'll hear from Shane Beamer. I know Gamecock fans are excited to have him back in the fold and hopefully having the opportunity to recapture some of the glory that was here when he was working under Steve Spurrier. So stay with us. That's next. Gamecock Insider is brought to you by Prisma Health, the official health care provider of the Gamecocks. Today tastes like a home game, like a huddle. Tastes like we're bringing the heat and like a front row seat. <laughs> Today tastes like we're a team and it never tasted this good. It happens to you. There's Colonial Life. Benefits that help cover what your regular insurance doesn't. percent APR for 48 months plus $500 holiday bonus cash on a new 2021 Toyota RAV4 and 90 day payment deferral. Don't miss out. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places.
Hello and welcome. I'm Todd Ellis. It is my pleasure to introduce the 36th head football coach of the University of South Carolina, Shane Beamer. And Coach, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Feels great to hear you say that. Yeah, it's good, good for us as well. Coach, anybody who's known you professionally uh, has known that you've had a plan and taking steps to be a head coach since you were a graduate assistant. What were part of those steps and was part of the plan always potentially coming back to South Carolina? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this the roles that I've been in throughout my career, the coaches I've worked for. I was one of those guys, I'm a, a meticulous note taker, and from the time I got into this coaching profession, was taking notes and preparing for this day. And uh, my wife and I had an amazing four years here when we were here in Columbia, and when we left uh, back in 2000, after the 2010 season, it was with the ultimate goal of coming back to uh, Columbia, uh, hopefully as the head coach one day, and to see that become a reality is pretty, uh, pretty mind-blowing. When you were just a candidate for this job, you had unprecedented support from players, former players at Carolina, of the teams that you were a part of. What did that mean to you personally, and what do you think you did to earn that support? Man, I don't know. It was um, extremely humbling. I told my wife before this thing finished, I said, you know, I'm going to be extremely disappointed if this opportunity doesn't work out. But how rewarding these last few weeks have been hearing from so many of those guys. To have a guy like a Marcus Lattimore come in here as a heralded recruit and to have him tell me that when he first got here, the confidence that I gave him just because of a good play that he made in a special teams drill, what an impact that made on him to be able to go out and play as a freshman and to talk to a guy like a Connor Shaw, uh, to be driving home a couple of weeks ago and I get a FaceTime from Melvin Ingram and Akeem Auguste, you know, so just being able to reconnect with so many of those guys, it just, it really reaffirmed uh, why I coach, why I love to do what I do, and, and uh, uh, those guys being as outspoken as they were and supportive means the world to me. Now, one question I know Coach Tanner, I bet, at least had to ask you in the interview process was with someone who had not been a prior head coach and had had limited roles in coordinating, you'd coordinated in some positions before, why were you going to be prepared to be the head coach at South Carolina? What, what was your answer for that? I know you were ready for Oh, that. absolutely. I've been asked that plenty and was certainly <laughs> ready. For one, I'm 43 years old and I've been the son of a head coach for pretty much my entire life. So, no, I haven't been one, but I've lived it uh, from the day that I was born, essentially. Uh, and the roles I've had in my career, I've coached offense, I've coached defense, I've coached special teams. Uh, when you're the special teams coordinator, you're the only coach other than the head coach that stands in front of the entire team in the team meeting room. When you're a special teams coordinator, you've got to have experience managing a roster, managing a staff, motivating players, and then being able to connect with guys, not just in your position group, but throughout the, uh, throughout the team. I've been an associate head coach. Uh, uh, December 2014 at Virginia Tech, I was an interim head coach for an entire month when my dad was going through some health issues. And, and then just the fact, the coaches I've worked for, no, I haven't been one. Uh, but I've worked for Kirby Smart, as a, he was a first-time head coach. I'm working for Lincoln Riley, a first-time head coach. So the experiences that I've had with those guys and, and all the different roles, going back to what you said a minute ago, trying to prepare myself for this day, I wouldn't have traded the path that I've, I've been on uh, to get to this day because it's prepared me better than if I had just been an offensive coordinator or something like that for the last 10 years. How about a timeline? Because I, 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 we're all sensitive to teams trying to finish out their season. We know. For instance, you have responsibilities. Otherwise, it may take you back to Oklahoma and other coaches do that you may be hiring. But do you have a timeline in mind about when you'd like to have the staff completed? As soon as possible, but again, it's gotta be the right, uh, it's gotta be the right group. I'm not gonna rush to get this thing done. We're fortunate that we have some time. It's not a time period that we're able to be out on the road recruiting. Uh, certainly people have questions about what the direction is gonna be and, and I'm uh, certainly privy to that and understand that. Uh, but at the same time, we're gonna make sure that we get the premier staff uh, in the country into this program and, and that may take a little bit of time and when it's done it's done but I'm obviously eager to get started but it really until the players get back for good in 2021 when the spring semester starts uh, that's when obviously we have to be done and if it gets done before then certainly that'll be a bonus. You were part of the staff in 2010 the only one that won an SEC East title here as well you know how good the players were on that football team at what it takes to win a title in this conference you were also a big part of recruiting those folks what is your plan for the recruiting office? Will you hire a coordinator and or assign someone on the staff a coordinator? Give us a general feel about your philosophy on the recruiting process. Yeah, well certainly that's where it starts. Uh, right. Obviously it starts right here in this great state. There's a, 
an immense amount of talent in this state. There's great high school coaching in this state and throughout this region. So it starts right here at home first, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we, we won big previously when I was here with, with in-state guys. And uh, being able to talk to those guys and keep those guys at home and making sure they can accomplish, they understand they can accomplish all their goals on and off the field here at Carolina. Uh, so that's where it starts. And then in regards to staff, those are all conversations that you know Coach Tanner and I are working through. And, and uh, I can say this, they're uh, very adamant about giving us the resources that we need to be successful from a recruiting standpoint. And, uh, and I know we will be. And as far as titles and things like that, uh, we'll get into all that. But we, we can't, the, the reaction from recruits already has been strong. And, and there's a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement from hearing from those guys. And, and I can't wait to really get rolling on that going, going forward. I was talking to Coach Tanner and then looking back as well, I didn't realize you've been a part of a couple of staffs, as you said, that were the first time, their first time into the job in transition. So you came on when they took the job and making a transition that's familiar to you that's going on right now. Right. How has that helped so that you can hit the ground running as quickly as possible? It's been great. Just seeing things we did well during, those, uh, during that time frame, things maybe we wish we had done different. I'm a meticulous note taker and, you know, going back to, uh, when I was here back in 2007, 8, 9, and 10, uh, Kim Fields, obviously, who's a rock star in this facility, she started helping me keep a binder of just notes, ideas for when I ever became a head coach, hopefully. And uh, still have that. You know, it's down in my office right now that I still refer to. It certainly needs to be updated uh, <laughs> from what she started 10 years ago. But those are all things, you know, every staff meeting, every team meeting that we've ever had at Virginia Tech, at Oklahoma, at Georgia, I've got notes from that, the things that we talked about, and being able to refer back to that as a great resource for me and, and uh, something I'm going to continue to tap into to make sure that we uh, uh, do the best here going forward in this transition. At 43 years old, you don't become a head football coach at a Power 5 SEC school unless you could sell yourself. And I know from your days at Carolina, you sold the university well. Are you excited about selling student athletes Carolina program and your thoughts generally on what you'd like them to know early on? Yeah, absolutely. To me, it's it's how excited I am to be the head football coach here at Carolina. Um, you know, ever since my name kind of became associated with this job, there's uh, my kids are excited. I come home at night, my seven-year-old son, he's running around the kitchen waving a towel, playing sandstorm in the kitchen. Uh, my oldest daughter, she found some old Carolina sweatshirts that I had when I was here. So they're excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. It's a, it's a special, special place and somewhere that we've always wanted to come back to. Every Sunday night since I left in 2010, my wife and I have sat down and watched the coaches show with you, whether it be interviewing Coach Muschamp, Coach Spurry, or just trying to stay connected to Carolina. And, and uh, we have great ties. We have great friends in this community. We're excited about being here for a long time. And everything that we need to be successful and and, and win championships here is in place. And that's what's got me excited. And I can't, uh, can't wait to get going full speed and, and, and be the head football coach here. Coach, uh, you, you've been to some very big programs with incredible fan bases, but I know you have specific memories probably of being South Carolina and the fan base here. Anything you'd like them to know early on as you're trying to hit the ground and get running that the, the fans should know about? That we're all in this thing together and, and we need you. Uh, that atmosphere in williams Bryce Stadium is second to none. I've, I've coached in the Big 12, I've coached in the ACC, I've coached and been in every SEC stadium there is. And the excitement, the energy, the passion of, of the Carolina family, Gamecock Nation, and that, that atmosphere in williams Bryce is a unbelievable recruiting tool. And there's nothing better than a Saturday in williams Bryce with 2001, with Sandstorm, and all the other great traditions. And uh, that is a, a great tool for us. And we need you because we're all in this thing together to make that the type of home field advantage that we need and we're going to have. Tune in this Thursday night to Carolina Calls on the Gamecock Sports Network. Frank Martin will be talking Gamecock men's basketball from 7 to 8 p.m. at Backstreet's Bar and Grill in Columbia. make a lasting impact through acts of kindness, compassion, and strength. 
They inspire us to innovate and educate, to do more than we ever thought possible, to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, inspired by you. Come on, Whoa. let's go. Come on, let's go in. <laughs> Toyotathon is on. Tis the season for great year-end deals. Right now, during Toyotathon, lease a new 2021 Toyota RAV4 LE for just $249 a month for 36 months plus $500 holiday bonus cash. Don't miss out. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. When the unexpected happens to you, there's Colonial Life. Benefits that help cover what your regular insurance doesn't. Welcome back to Gamecock Insider, everybody. I'm Derek Scott at the Long Family Football Operations Center. Football, of course, front and center in Gamecock country right now with the introduction of Shane Beamer as the new head coach of the Carolina football program. Let's take a look at his initial visit to Columbia upon being named the head coach, including a visit with his new team. Coach. Good to be with you. How are you, brother? I'm awesome now. Good to see you. Great to see you. Good to see you. Great. Appreciate you coming Good, by. Good to have you. I uh, appreciate you sticking around. I know a lot of you guys are eager to get home and, and get out of here, and thank you for sticking around this afternoon uh, to let me visit with you for a few minutes. And what Coach Tanner just said is exactly right. He was adamant from all along that I get here and visit with you guys before we do anything else. And uh, that was important to me. I understand, I get it. I'm asking you to trust me, and I'm going to earn that trust. None of you came here to play for me, I understand that. You all came to play for Coach Muschamp, and uh, I appreciate everything he did for this program. So for me to sit up here and tell you right now, trust me this and that, that's not how it works. I'm gonna earn your trust, and I'm gonna do that each and every day, and I can't wait to get started going forward on that. Uh, it's gonna be demanding, and we're gonna work hard. That's what it takes to get where we want to go. Things have to change. When something's not working, Change has to happen, and change is uncomfortable. I get it, but that's the only way you grow. So we're going to go through this thing together, and we're going to work hard, and we're going to be demanding because that's what it takes to get where we want to go. Uh, me as a person, me as a coach, what I want this program to be about, a lot of core values that I believe in, the way I want to live my life, the way I want our football team to play. One of those that I believe strongly in is love. And that's love for this university, love for each other. I've been a part of some great teams, some championship teams, played in national championship games. And that those teams, the one common denominator with all of them was the, how connected and the love they had on that team for each other. So I'm very, uh, uh, that's very important to me. Gratitude, being thankful. To be in this facility right now as your head football coach, to, to pull, drive right past williams Bryce Stadium and fly over that on my way in today, the thankfulness and the gratitude that I have to Coach Tanner and this administration for me to be your new head football coach is something that will permeate through me each and every single day. And I want you guys to feel that as well, that gratitude to be a South Carolina Gamecock. Toughness is big with me on the field and then off the field as well. Being mentally tough and being physically tough with the way that we play football and the way that we live our lives. Trust, all right? We've got to trust each other. And like I said, I'm going to earn that with my actions each and every day, okay? And know that when I tell you something, you can take it to the bank, all right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you one thing that you, what you want to hear, all right? And we ask the same from you as well on that as well. Accountability, all right? We're going to hold you guys accountable. If we, we have standards here of the way that we're going to play, and we're going to hold you accountable when things aren't met. These things that I'm talking about, these words, they're not just words on a wall that we're going to put up there and have plastered around the meeting room because it looks cool, all right? You have my word on that, that the things that I'm talking about, the things that are important to me, are going, to be the, are going to be the standard and the things that we, the way that we live our lives, and we're going to hold you accountable to that. I'll, I'm all about competing. You ask any player that I've ever been around, and, and the one thing, if you look at all the players that I've coached, the players that I've been around, I develop deep, deep relationships with these guys 
and love to connect with them. And I can't wait to do that with you guys as well. And part of that is the way that we compete, compete in the classroom, compete on the practice field, compete if, with everything that we do outside this facility. That's big on me, and we're going to have a great competitive environment out here as well. Well, I'm going to be here today uh, and tomorrow for sure, and then uh, my plan is to go back to Oklahoma uh, tomorrow night. We have a game this Saturday uh, against West Virginia, and then we're playing in the Big 12 Championship next weekend. So things may change, but I want to be loyal to the guys that I'm coaching out there as well and uh, finish this season as well these next two weeks with those guys uh, that I've been coaching all year out of loyalty. Uh, to them, and then, uh, but I'll be doing both jobs wherever I am, and can't wait to be, can't wait to uh, to be back here full time with you guys. Okay. All right. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate you. a lasting impact through acts of kindness, compassion, and strength. They inspire us to innovate and educate, to do more than we ever thought possible, to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, inspired by you. Unexpected happens to you. There's Colonial Life. Benefits that help cover what your regular insurance doesn't. Good hard work has earned Alan Ross the title of Colonial Life Academic Athlete of the Week. A member of the swimming and diving team, Ross is a junior civil engineering major with a 3.879 GPA. This week's Academic Athlete is brought to you by Colonial Life. Colonial Life, the benefits of good, hard work. That's your Sansbury. Did you see that play? As I'm joined now by Brad Muller, the voice of Gamecock women's basketball, Victoria Saxon, boy, she's had to take on some added responsibility this season. Well, she's a co-captain and a team leader as a junior, and she does a lot of things on both ends of the floor, does a good job of finishing under the basket, but her defensive presence is really uh, taking her game to the next level. As far as our Terminix Pest Player of the Week, you see this team all the time. Who do you got? I like Zaya Cook this week. The sophomore guard led the Gamecocks, had 19 points in the win over Iowa State. Four three-pointers. The Gamecocks had 13 as a team. Really helped open things up on the inside with their outside shooting. Gamecocks suffered their first loss of the season, but they bounced right back against Iowa State. Do you feel like maybe that, that was an attention getter for this team? Yeah, I think the attention getter was attention to detail. They have to run the offense a little better. They needed better point guard play, and they needed some better play inside, finishing around the basket with Aaliyah Boston and being more physical inside, and I think that's what they're getting. Brad and I are coming back in just a bit. We will be talking a little bit about keys to the game for the upcoming matchup with Temple. So stay with us. This is Gamecock Insider. Gamecock women's basketball fans, download the Gamecock app and play three points the hard way. Brought to you by our friends with the best made-from-scratch biscuits, Hardee's. If the women's basketball team makes three three-pointers in a game, 
you can score a free sausage biscuit at Hardee's tomorrow during breakfast hours. Once we hit our three three-pointers, stop by your favorite Hardee's, show them the coupon in the Gamecocks app, and bam, a free biscuit. Get your biscuit at participating Columbia and Spartanburg area Hardee's. Feed your happy. Today tastes like a home game, like a huddle. Tastes like we're bringing the heat and like a front row seat. <laughs> Today tastes like we're a team and it never tasted this good. It happens to you. There's Colonial Life. Benefits that help cover what your regular insurance doesn't. People have the power to make a lasting impact through acts of kindness, compassion, and strength. They inspire us to innovate and educate to do more than we ever thought possible. To help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, inspired by you. Farm Bureau Insurance is giving you a chance to win two tickets to an upcoming home women's basketball game. Visit uscontest.com and register for your chance to win. Everyone that registers will be entered for the chance to win the grand prize, an autographed ball from Coach Don Staley. Register to win at uscontest.com. That's uscontest.com. Gamecock Insider is brought to you by Prisma Health, the official health care provider of the Gamecock. Welcome back to Gamecock Insider. Derek Scott with Brad Muller as we talk some Carolina women's basketball. Next up, the Temple Owls. Always a fun matchup because it's Philadelphia, Dawn's hometown, as well as the school where she used to coach. Yeah, it's always a great game. In fact, last year in Philly, South Carolina really had to scrap against Temple. Gamecocks won at 78-71, but the Owls always bring their best game for South Carolina. On the Toyota keys to the game, how do you see this one? Well, the keys for South Carolina stop their big girl, Mia Davis, who's averaging 28 points, nine and a half rebounds in two games so far. And on South Carolina's end, get our big girl going. Aaliyah Boston had a great game against Iowa State, 13 points and 15 boards, but she can still do more. We saw that last year. She needs to be more physical on defense, block some more shots, and be physical on offense. Get yourself to the free throw line. I think she's only been to the line a dozen times in five games. She can get there a dozen times per game. All right, that matchup is coming your way on Thursday. For Brad Muller, I'm Derek Scott. Thanks for joining us on this initial edition this season of Gamecock Insider. We'll see you again next week.